Hi, this is Amit Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again, Dave Van Everen. You are SVP of Marketing at uh, Mirantis. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Uh, you guys are making some acquisitions. Uh, so to talk about the company that you're acquiring and why you decided to acquire it. I mean, you acquired Docker Enterprise last year, so you guys are on the spree of acquisitions. I guess you could call it a spree now that there are a couple. Uh, with this one, uh, it differed from Docker Enterprise. We acquired the talent of a company called Contena, based in Finland. Uh, and it was a small team of very capable, capable Kubernetes engineers. Uh, so we've brought them on board, and um, you know, along with their expertise in Kubernetes and related software and um, formed a Marantis Finland office as a result of their onboarding. Are they working on any specific uh, product or services of uh, Marantis or is just help helping overall? So while they were at Contena, they worked on two primary technologies. One was a Kubernetes distro called uh, Pharos. And Pharos was significant in the way that it addressed lifecycle management challenges. So they had developed some unique uh, capabilities for deployment and then for updating Kubernetes itself. Um, the other product that they had worked on was Lens, which was uh, kind of like the default Kubernetes dashboard on steroids. So it was um, you know, different technology that they had built that uh, performed many of the same functions of Kubernetes dashboard and then went um, multiple steps further in areas like providing a terminal for uh, command line interfacing to nodes and containers and additional real-time insights, role-based access controls, and a number of other capabilities that are currently absent from the Kubernetes dashboard. Those two uh, open source projects had been um, utilized by literally hundreds of organizations around the world. And so, uh, you know, they have a proven track record of contributing valuable technology pieces to the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, and we saw an opportunity to bring them on board and, uh, you know, basically capitalized on that opportunity as quickly as we could. And how do you plan to integrate these two products with the Mirantis offerings? We're looking at it. Many of the things that, um, you know, they had addressed in Pharos, for example, are things that we're addressing with, uh, you know, some of our Kubernetes as a service related features. And so, um, you know, we, we saw it as more of an opportunity to fold in the expertise uh, that those fo folks were bringing with them. Uh, the, the technologies themselves as open source projects um, will continue. And we are evaluating whether there's a way to incorporate those technologies into our product portfolio. Uh, I think it's more likely that the capabilities those products provide will inform our roadmap. And so we, you know, have identified through those products a number of capabilities that were resonating in the market. And we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we provide the best possible Kubernetes experience and the fastest path to modern applications for companies. And what does your roadmap look like for 2020? Uh, KubeCon is coming up, so a lot of activities will be there around that. But in general, can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, 2020 is going to be a, a major year for Mirantis. So uh, we're weeks away from launching the first Docker Enterprise release since the acquisition happened. Uh, it's on track. It has potentially even more significant capabilities than what Docker Enterprise 3.0 brought to market. So we're really extremely proud of you know, the work that the team has done to uh, quickly integrate and not miss a beat, essentially, with, with product development. Um, following that, we're also hard at work on merging the Mirantis CAS capabilities that we announced at KubeCon last year with Docker Enterprise and providing multi-cluster management and continuous automated updates 
uh, advanced lifecycle management capabilities to the Kubernetes that's already within Docker Enterprise. So uh, that will be our first unified release, um, and that's you know months away, let's say. Um, so around the middle of the year. Uh, and then we have um, you know some really exciting things that are looking like they'll roll out towards the end of the year um, related to application management. And um, so I think we have we have an exciting roadmap. We've been talking to a number of customers, um, both Docker Enterprise as well as um, Miranda's customers about the roadmap. And uh, feedback has overwhelmingly been positive. Uh, our customers are, are truly excited by um, the direction that we're taking the technology. Uh, if you look at Marentes, you know, the company has been evolving. Uh, you had stakes in OpenStack, uh, you tried with Spinnaker, and now with Kubernetes. So when I look at uh, Marentes today, what are the technologies that you're betting on? What are the technologies you're shedding, you know, as, as, a, as a baggage or not, not, not that much invested in? We're definitely embracing Kubernetes as the open standard on which enterprises will base their journey towards modern applications. So Kubernetes itself has an, an ecosystem of technologies that comes with it. And so when we speak about Kubernetes, we speak about full stack Kubernetes, which includes that ecosystem, let's say, you know, a couple dozen components in a typical cluster deployment. Um, the, but that's um, not a complete picture either. Uh, so really, our job uh, as you know, kind of like um, a, you know, a company that's helping our customers accelerate their path to modern applications is to streamline all of the different parts of that. So it can start with infrastructure automation. Um, we have tremendous uh, proven expertise in. IaaS and with OpenStack and lifecycle management for OpenStack and managed services for OpenStack, all of that um, plays a role in helping companies move faster and become more agile uh, as they're modernizing their applications. We apply many of those same strengths to the Kubernetes ecosystem. And then you mentioned Spinnaker. We've also developed and launched a number of um, professional services related offerings around application modernization and helping our customers you know, write code that um, is based in you know, microservices architecture or integrate CICD pipelines or modernize the tooling for CICD to better support you know, cloud native patterns. Uh, and all of those things that our services team provides are you know, complementary to the technology. So with Marantis, we feel that um, you know, that's, that's a, a unique uh, value that only Marantis can really provide to the market where we can couple technology, open source technology with, with strong services to ensure that companies really get the most out of that open source technology and fulfill their ultimate goal, which is to accelerate their pace of innovation. And also, Mirantis has recently joined Aleph Networking. Now, the, the funny thing is that uh, when you look about look at all these technologies, they are somehow inter they are linked together. Cloud Native World, uh, as they are deploying uh, 5G, they are using a lot of open source technology. All the software defined networking is there. Uh, Kubernetes is playing a big role. So, so is there any common pattern that I can see in Mirantis when you are joining Aleph Networking and then you are you know acquiring this company and then focusing on Kubernetes while working on Spinnaker and OpenStack. Uh, can you talk about that? Specifically, LF networking covers uh, tungsten fabric, or you know, formerly known as Open Contrail. Uh, that's one of the technologies that we utilize extensively in our current uh, offering around OpenStack. Uh, it's also something that uh, many of our service provider customers have um, asked for us to to continue to support. Um, it's one of the things that also has um, helped 
Mirantis, you know, gain traction with those service providers for our, our expertise around open contrail and tungsten fabric. Um, the, the technology itself is an important part of our roadmap. Uh, and so while we, um, you know, we use Calico for the container networking, um, tungsten fabric will be an important part of the underlying networking, uh, supporting Kubernetes deployments. Um, and, you know, so we, we feel that, um, you know, staying true to our heritage, we want to be involved in the open community and have both a voice and, um, you know, a stake in the direction the community is, is moving in. It might be too early to ask, but um, a lot of, uh, uh, especially in cloud native world, a lot of new technologies, new jargons, new paradigms keep popping up. What are these technologies? Like a lot of things are going on as service mesh, a lot of controversy is going on regarding, you know, HTO and LinkedIn and all those things. So what are the other technologies that Mirantis is eyeing or looking at that, you know, where, you know, you might be interested in either making some investment or inroads into those technologies, if you can talk about that. Good question. So, uh, you know, Mirantis, um, not that long ago, maybe six months or so, announced uh, a training program for Istio. Uh, so you could say that we've made a bet on Istio as the emerging standard for service mesh. Uh, and that was... Um, you know, bundled with our Mirantis CAS technology. So um, we include Istio as a service mesh as a different um, kind of like a default uh, in child clusters under Mirantis CAS management. And um, we're expecting to include um, Istio in the next release. It'll be used as an ingress uh, with with Docker Enterprise initially, and you know, moving moving forward, we're still looking at how to best um, deploy uh, deploy it in a service mesh configuration by default, and you know, provide kind of like uh, a configurable uh, but still workable default deployment for uh, Istio as a service mesh, and that's. You know, the, that's the type of balancing act or, or and a technology challenge that Mirantis embraces, one where we can continue to provide the greatest flexibility in our industry, but do it in such a way that uh, there are essentially guardrails in place so that companies um, don't end up having something that's, that's unmanageable or configured incorrectly. Dave, uh, once again, thank you for taking your time out and, and talking to me and not only explaining, you know, this this acquisition and also kind of, you know, sharing the roadmap that Mirantis has and plus, you know, uh, some of the technologies that you are going to invest on. It also shows, you know, the way Mirantis itself is evolving with the, with the, with the market. Uh, and uh, I look forward to talking to you and seeing you at KubeCon. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much.